In a recent video, I was talking about building an SMD crystal radio, which I did, and it did not work well. It only got one station. And one of the questions that kept popping up in the comment section is, do I have the orientation of these correct? So I assumed that the, the coil was running left to right, as we are looking at it right now. But some people brought up the fact that it may be running from bottom to top or top to bottom, however you want to call it. And the real answer is that we need to open up one of these and take a look inside. Oh no, please don't. Yes, I know, Mr. Inductor, but somebody has to somebody has to make the sacrifice and you have been chosen. So I've got a whole bunch of these and I've got my my uh, inductor. This is an official inductor opening tool. Don't try this at home. And we put it in here and let's see if we can just get it to crack. And I've got more than one if it doesn't work out. Nope, too far back, too far back. Just, just the right amount of pressure. There we go. Mm. Crunch. Well, that didn't feel right. Oh, it did open. Okay, so we will pull it open and then we will get in there on a close up and see what is going on. Okay, so let's get in here close so we can see. Okay, there we go. Um, well, I did not break it open enough. I have to crush a little bit more, but right now, my first impression is the coils are going this way, which means it's, it's oriented vertically, which would explain a lot. So let's bring in the crushers again and see if we can break this without totally destroying it. And I'm still not getting a really clear picture, but yes, more and more it looks like the coil is running this way. Hmm. So that means I could simply, yeah, there we go. We can see that a lot better on this side. Make sure we keep it in focus. Yeah, can you see that? The coil is running this like this. So that means the orientation of the magnetic field would be that way, which means I have them stacked wrong, edge to edge would exactly not work. Okay, so let's crush this a little bit more, see if we can make it perfectly clear. Well, that is the coil. And it's interesting, it looks like the coil is baked in at the time which is not like some of the others I've dealt with. Okay, let me adjust. Okay, after a little sanding, we can definitely see the coil is running this way. So, if this is right, then we should be able to resolder the inductors in a, it, it, well, flat to flat, I guess you would say. And we might get a little bit better results. So let's see. There's been some questions about the Q of these. Uh, the Q being low, that's the efficiency. But we shall soon see because it's a relatively simple experiment to resolder and uh, test it again. So these are our inductors. And what I plan to do is to stack them one on top of the other. And I'm going to rotate them um, opposite for every other one. So this is the 330. You notice the 220 is upside down. This 220 is right side up and that 470 is upside down. So I will do this. I will solder that on there. Solder that on there. Solder that on there. 
Now, I'm fighting with myself about rotating these. Maybe they should all be in the same direction, but we shall see how that works. Um, and okay, let me go do that. I will be right back and uh, show you what I've done. Okay, back again. Here we are. Uh, per our last video, this is the 220 end. Uh, this is the very last one. So it would be uh, 330, 220, 220, 470, 470, and a 220. And instead of laying them out edge to edge, I have put them flat to flat. So this is our antenna. This is the ground. This is one side of the earphone, and the other side goes to the ground. And then this is the one side of the capacitor, the variable capacitor, and the other side, of course, will be the ground. And that's pretty much it. Now we just need to go to the bench, hook it up to an antenna, and see if it works. Well, here we are in the usual test rig. For those who have seen my videos before, this is uh, how I've always got it set up. Here's our oscilloscope. You can see somebody is playing music rather loud. Back here is our ground connection and our antenna connection. And then the scope connections here and over here on the ground. This uh, board is my my prototyping board, so it has the standard circuitry of the diode, the, the headphone, and capacitor, and then I can put my coil in here and just test the coil. Now, for those of you with sharp eyes, you probably notice that these connections are nothing like we start out uh, with the other, and yeah, in fact, these bottom three inductors aren't even being used. So, let me show you. Um, Here's what I ended up with. So again, the bottom three inductors are not even being used. The ground is here at the beginning. Normally this is the antenna and then the ground, but it does not work well that way at all. So the bad news, one of the bad news is, is that this is not working anything like I thought. So this is, uh, this is just good luck that it happened. So ground through the earphone circuit here and then over to a tap that's not even supposed to be there. This is between the two 220s. And these are 22 microhenries each. And yeah, so that's not even supposed to be there. Uh, the antenna's connected here. And then from ground, or is it ground, ground through the capacitor and then out through the red wire back to here on the other side of the other uh, 220. Again, none of that's being used. I'll draw this up and stick it in the video so you have a better. But yeah, the good news is that it works. Uh, this is very tiny. It's very loud. The selectivity is very good. The sensitivity is a little bit lower than the air core coil. So that surprised me because the Q on this is supposed to be low, but appears to be working well. Some future improvements. Uh, well, I'm doing this by trial and error because none of the air core <laughs> coil calculations online even come close. They're not even within 20%. So this was a total trial and error type deal. I need to come up with some kind of jig where I can swap these in and out. If I have to do trial and error, I got to have some way to do it quickly and uh, yeah, remove these, put them in the circuit and other than soldering and all. Also, I think super gluing them together would produce better results, uh, tighter uh, coupling. Okay, and the other thing is that I would, I'm using full capacitance over here. This is uh, two 365s. It would be better if I could get rid of one of these and use a little bit more inductance. What else, what else is interesting? Um, yeah, I, I've opened up a whole new can of worms. Uh, this is not what I anticipated. This is not working the way I thought. The, uh, the ground and the antenna are swapped for one thing. And then of course, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just not the circuit. So kind of fell into this by chance. And I, I don't really know what to do because I've looked online and I can't find anybody who, you know, puts these inductors together like this. So, okay, well, let's go through the channels and see what we got. So this is the one that's not too far from my house. As you can see, it's really loud. Um, there's a guy talking. There he's at his loudest. 
a little bit of bleed through from the last station. He's audible, but the bleed through is annoying. There's music, barely audible, not really. There's somebody talking. Oh, it's this station. Okay. He's not talking, he's singing. And there's one more, this older guy talking. So the sensitivity is a little low, a little lower than say the uh, air core, but um, the sensitivity is excellent. So yeah, um, the good news is that this is totally workable. The bad news is right now I have no way of doing the calculations and, and coming up with a, uh, a way of you know predicting what's going to happen. Again, I'm kind of in trial and error mode, which is not good. Okay, well that was it for this uh, this round of of our uh, solid inductor type uh, radio. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your crystal radio explorations.